Hello and welcome to the news on NTA International. I'm Ayo Deji. Makinde, first, the headlines. Preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the United States. So help you, God. So help me, God. Congratulations, Mr. Thank President. You. A new chapter opens as Joe Biden takes oath of office as 46th President of United States of America, promises to unite Americans. President Muhammadu Buhari swears in newly appointed members of Code of Conduct Bureau and Public Service Police Service Commission. Plus, African Union sets to commence online placing of pre-orders of COVID-19 vaccine for member countries. Now the news in details. Joe Biden has been sworn in as the 46th President of the United States alongside Kamala Harris as Vice President, just as World Health Organization says UK COVID-19 variant has been detected in 60 countries. Joyce Omitu brings us up to speed on developments on the foreign scene. We we'll await that report in our next bulletin. Meanwhile, newly appointed members of the Code of Conduct Bureau and Police Service Commission have been sworn in by President Muhammadu Buhari to fill existing vacancies in the critical organs of government. The swearing-in ceremony, which preceded the meeting of the Federal Executive Council, was in fulfillment of constitutional provisions. State House correspondent Adamu Sambu has the details. Sworn in as members of the Code of Conduct Bureau were Hezua Johnson Abonaima from Edo State, Benedict Omiano Anambra, and Babatunde Olainka Balogun Ogun State. Oyemuche Namani from Inigo State took oath as member of the Police Service Commission. The Code of Conduct Bureau is established to maintain a high standard of public morality in the conduct of government business and to ensure that accountability is not compromised in actions and behavior of public officers. For President Muhammad Buhari, whose administration's hallmark is the fight against corruption, this is one agency of remarkable significance. And indications are that the newly appointed members are coming on board to make a world of difference. I have all my life attempted to fight indiscipline, corruption, and the general audacity in the society. I've used my position as a police officer to do so over the years. So having me been invited over to a code of conduct bureau means that this is an opportunity to actualize those things that I've been conceptualizing. I will not be in a position to bring this thing to the doorsteps of Nigerians. This is how we should conduct ourselves. This is what the law says. And by the grace of God, we, we tend to not just preach it, we want to enforce it. What is important to me and to my colleagues, I believe that this country deserves to get the best. Corruption has eaten up deeply and it's so sad. President Buhari cannot just do it alone. We require everyone. Let us put Nigeria first. The president will not regret appointing me as a member of the CCB. I will do my best. I'll make sure that I will write my name in the annals of history. The newly appointed member of the Police Service Commission also promised to make the desired impact in the discharge of his responsibilities. I will contribute uh, my own uh, uh, quota to trying to see where I can um, uh, raise the standard. You know, answers, I know the problems of Nigerian police. It's a familiar story. Uh, we try and do what we can do to have positive changes in the police force. The Police Service Commission has a mission to improve service delivery in the Nigeria police force by promoting transparency and accountability. From the State House, Adamu Sambu, NTA News. A bill seeking to give legal backing to the harmonization of retirement age for teachers in Nigeria has been approved by the Federal Executive Council. The Minister of Education, Adamu, Adamu 
who announced this while briefing journalists after the council's meeting described the bill as a giant step forward towards enhancing teaching and learning in the country. Now, back to our earlier report, we told you that Joe Biden has been sworn in as the 46th president of the United States of America, alongside Kamala Harris as vice president, just as the World Health Organization has come out to say that the UK COVID-19 variant has been detected in 60 countries. Joyce Ometu has details. It's a new dawn as Democrat Joe Biden assumes office as the 46th president of the United States of America. I, Joseph Robinette Biden Jr., do solemnly swear that I will faithfully execute that I will faithfully execute the office of president of the United States. Office of president of the United States and will, to the best of my ability, will, to the best of my ability, preserve, protect, and defend. Preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the United States. So help you, God. So help me, God. He took the oath of office under a security tight ceremony attended by few dignitaries, including the Clintons, or best Vice President Mike Pence, Chief Justice of America, and other justices. And I pledge this to you: I will be a president for all Americans. All Americans. And I promise you, I will fight as hard for those who did not support me as for those who did. Ahead of Biden's swearing-in ceremony, the outgunned President Donald Trump was honored with 21-gun salutes. Before his departure, Trump wished the incoming administration well, stating that his leadership was the best in all standards. Meanwhile, former President Donald Trump left a note for his successor before he left the Oval Office for the last time. The note to the incoming President Joe Biden continues a long-standing tradition between successive presidents. The letters are meant to stay private, but oftentimes get leaked out to the public. On the eve of his inauguration Tuesday, U.S. President Joe Biden led a national memorial in honor of the 400,000 people across the United States who have died in the coronavirus pandemic amid more than 24 million positive cases, both numbers being the highest in the world. Moving on, scientists have warned that the United Kingdom will see more record-breaking rises in COVID-19 fatalities after the country recorded 1,610 new deaths, the highest single-day increase since the pandemic began. The World Health Organization in its weekly update said the UK coronavirus strain has been detected in 60 countries. With the global death toll now well past 2 million and new variants of the virus causing deep concern, Countries across the world are grappling with how to slow infections until vaccines become widely available. And Nigeria on Tuesday logged another high daily death toll from the pandemic with 15 people lost in one day. A total of 113,305 COVID-19 infections have now been reported in the country after 1,301 new cases were found in 22 states. Joyce Ometu. NTA News. Back on the continent, African Union member states will be able to start placing online pre-orders for their COVID-19 vaccine allocation through the African Medical Supplies Platform. This is coming on the heels of a provisional 270 million doses secured for African Union member states. Benny Adams has the details. The Union, through its COVID-19 African Vaccine Acquisition Tax Team, has secured vaccines on behalf of the African Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. Afri Exim Bank is facilitating payment by providing advance commitment of two billion U.S. dollars to the manufacturers on behalf of all member states. African Union Special Envoy Strive Masiina is of the view that the initiative is to ensure fair allocation coupled with timely and equitable access of the vaccines across the continent. To support vaccination operations, the African Medical Supplies Platform has also launched ultra-low temperature freezers, personal protection equipment, and other accessories for member states. The 270 million vaccines are from Pfizer, Johnson & Johnson, and AstraZeneca. In Abuja, Benny Adams, NTA News.
Now, to ensure comprehensive and efficient environmental health action amid COVID-19, the Federal Ministry of Environment is adopting continuous primary preventive measure by disinfecting schools of dangerous pests and vectors. The measure is in partnership with the Federal Ministry of Education. On Nengiye Fine Face reports. The contamination of public places is a critical part of Nigeria's response to COVID-19. Several public places, including schools, offices, and markets, were decontaminated at the onset of the virus of the country. With the second wave of the pandemic already causing damage in the country, the Federal Minister of Environment is remodeling the decontamination exercise from a one-off process to a continuous one, beginning with federal government colleges across the country. Viruses, bacteria, and some other microbes or pathogens, if you call them uh, collectively, that can cause disease, uh, can be eliminated by this decontamination and disinfection because we use chemicals that are potent enough to kill viruses, bacteria, and the rest of them on contact. Okay, this, is... <laughs> this is achieved through interministerial collaboration with the Ministry of Education. <laughs> to implement the eighth resolution of the National Council on Environment. Minister of Environment, Mohamed Mahmoud Abubakar, wants the Minister of Education to establish environmental health departments in tertiary education institutions to promote professionalism in environmental health and sanitation services in Nigeria. Omengye Fine Face, NTA News. You're watching the news on NTA International Abuja. Stay tuned for more reports after the break. Hey, beautiful. Your eyes, your smile are all begging me to take you home tonight. Now reading page three. <laughs> Experience unlimited super fast internet access from Intel 4G. Intel. Live more. Dialogue, empathy, love, and unity. These are vital components of nation building. We have lived in harmony with Hebrews, with houses, with the dog. Everybody that comes to this state will have lived in uh, harmony. Because we believe in the unity of this uh, country. We call for peace, we call for calm, but we also call for justice and accountability. Let's be and not destroy. You're welcome back. The federal government has flagged off a better education service delivery for all, BESDA in MENA, Niger State. Usaina Musa reports that 1.9 billion Naira has so far been released for the program in the states. Minister of State Education says it has become imperative to integrate Islamic and Western education in primary schools in order to discourage the Almadri system in the society. He urged the state government and relevant organizations to make judicious use of the 1.9 billion naira released for the program to ensure its sustainability. For any country to develop, it must have a well-developed educational system that equips its people and prepares them with adequate knowledge that will enable them to take competitive advantage of a 21st century knowledge-driven economy. Governor Bakar Sanabalu, who reviewed developmental strides attained in the education sector of the state, says the administration prioritized investment in education within its limited resources. The improvement of functional education system, especially at the basic education level, has been part of our deliberate attempt at reducing the number of out-of-school children in the state. Niger State is among the 17 focal states enlisted for the Better Education Service Delivery for All, a World Bank-assisted program targeted at reducing the number of out-of-school children in Nigeria. 
a total of 1,599 alamajiri centers were identified in 517 communities in the 15 focal local government areas of the state. 206,093 out of school children were captured, so far 72,553 out of school children have been enrolled in 367 selected non-formal education centers. In the state, Imena Hussein Musa, NT News. From the State House comes a package report by Adam Sambu that a bill seeking to give legal backing to the harmonization of retirement age for teachers in Nigeria has been approved by the Federal Executive Council. The Minister of Education, Adamu Adamu, announced this while briefing journalists after the council's meeting and described the bill as a giant step forward towards enhancing teaching and learning in the country. This is the first meeting of the highest policy decision-making body of the Nigerian government for the year 2021 and the 30th to be held virtually in the new normal. With President Muhammad Buhari presiding, the meeting considered and approved several memoranda aimed at sustaining Nigeria's trajectory on the path of socio-economic development for a prosperous future. One of them, a harmonized retirement age for teachers in Nigeria bill 2020 to be forwarded to the National Assembly for enactment into law. The essence of the bill is seeking for approval so that there is legal backing for the new retirement age of 65 years for, for teachers. And then the service period being extended to 40 years. The president approved the introduction of bursary awards, which I told you here last year, improving teacher quality, funding teaching practice now from that fund, rural posting allowance, science teacher allowance, and then of course we uh, had the Teacher Registration Council of Nigeria, TRCN, under us that has professionalized the profession. The intention, the minister explained, is to attract and retain the best brands in the teaching profession towards improving educational standards. I want to assure teachers that this government will do to them what has never been done. And this is the first, the biggest step. All the promises the president made, all the approvals that he had given me of some special packages for teachers would now begin to be put into effect because this is a legal backing that is required for it. Also approved by the council is the award of contract for the upgrade of electricity component in the Calabar free trade zone area. Uh, the contracts were initially awarded in 2018 to upgrade the electrical facilities in the free trade zone area and uh, it was not completed so we brought a memo and the uh, council approved the sum of uh, 1 billion and uh, 484,000 Naira uh, for the completion of the electrical upgrade of the Calabar Free Trade Zone area. On his part, the Minister of Agriculture, Mohamed Sabu Nanuno, secured the Council's ratification of a treaty on plant genetic resource for food and agriculture. The input of this uh, uh, treaty is for the advancement and the enhancement of the agricultural production in the country, yes, it affects also other countries, about 167 of them. It will enhance uh, training and research uh, of our uh, agricultural scientists, uh, uh, agricultural practitioners, and so on and so forth. Before the commencement of the Council's meeting, a moment of silence was observed in honor of two former ministers who died recently. They were Jibril Martin Square from Ogun State, who served in the Ministry of Finance, Commerce and Industry, as well as Bala Kaoje from Kebi State, who was Minister of Sports. From the State House, Adamu Sambu, NTA News. The Director General, National Emergency Management Agency, NEMA, Air Vice Marshal Mohammed Mohammed, retired, has challenged academic institutions to intensify research in the areas of disaster risk reduction and mitigation to tackle the high-level devastation being experienced across the country. The Director General stated this when he received a delegation from the Nasarawa State University, KEFI, led by the Deputy Vice-Chancellor Academics, Professor Olayemi Akewumi, on a courtesy visit. Ilyasu Ali Yakubu reports. 
The magnitude of devastation occasioned by perennial flooding and other related disasters have continued to raise concerns among stakeholders with a view to finding a lasting solutions to the incident. These, the NEMA Director General says, all hands must be on deck to tackle the problem. He told the delegation to, as a matter of urgency, develop a mechanism that will see to the total reduction of loss of lives and property worth billions of naira. The whatever problems, whatever challenges we have, we are going to solve them scientifically. If we have Literal State University, why do you want to go too far to get solution to your problem? Leader of the delegation and Deputy Vice-Chancellor of the University, Professor Olayemi Akirumi, promised to assist the agency do whatever it can to achieve its desired projections. He congratulated the DG for the achievement within his short time in office. We can find many ways of collaborating. We are working in terms of research. We are working in terms of cooperation. And we are really ready to offer what we have at the institute. The meeting also identified other areas of mutual interest and collaboration for the effective management of disasters across the country. In Abuja, Ilyasu Ali Akubu, NTA News. The Federal Ministry of Industry, Trade and Investment has cautioned the general public against panic purchase of cement due to recent price increase of the product in some parts of the country, as the ministry has been working assiduously to engage relevant stakeholders in the cement manufacturing sector to address the lingering situation. A statement by the ministry further notifies the general public of its engagement with relevant stakeholders to meet increased demand of the commodity. It is good news for prospective members of the All Progressives Congress, APC, who intend to formalize their membership of the party during the forthcoming membership re-registration and revalidation exercise set to commence next week. Chairman, caretaker, and extraordinary convention planning committee of APC Governor May Malabuni said strong sanctions await the falters of the exercise. Salihu Abdullahi Gwanara reports. Bring that report at the moment, but in other news, as part of its mandate to curb all forms of illegal activities in the riverine area of Undo State, the Nigerian Navy Igbokoda base has intercepted six boats with over 100 drums of illegally refined diesel and arrested 24 suspects along Undo Lagos coastal routes. Olubukola Aduo has details. Items recovered from the suspects include 150 drums of illegally refined diesel, 10 horsepower outboard engines, 8 pumping machines, 24 mobile phones, and several GP tanks. The commanding officer, forward operating base Igwakoda, Navy Captain Shoaib Ahmed said, efforts to secure and curb illegal bankery, piracy, sea robbery and kidnapping within Ilajai and SL, the local government areas and environs, are beginning to yield positive results. The communities are therefore requested to provide the base for any military organization with meaningful information that will lead to the covering of all forms of illegalities. Some of the suspects confessed their involvement in the illegal business. I have to find something to offer to myself for me not to be on the street with my brothers. The base says the 24 suspects will be handed over to appropriate authorities as soon as investigations are concluded. In Akure, Olubukola, Aduo, NTA News. And next on the news is Sports Update with Tamara Ibiwe. Welcome to Sports Update. I am Tamara Ibiwe. The fourth one service one medal games began at the Moshu Dabiola National Stadium, Abuja, with 592 athletes competing for honors. <laughs> We 
have young guys that are talented. Uh, however, it's going to be difficult, but I believe that at the end of it, police will come on top. Permanent Secretary, Ministry of Youth and Sports Development, Nebolisa Anako, declared the event open. We are committed to the continuing organization of the work service. What about them? I wish to officially declare open the fourth edition of the work service from the I wish all of you to spend two days as we compete in this game. The agencies include Correctional Service, Fire Service, the Nigeria Police, Federal Safety Corps, Nigerian Air Force, and the Nigerian Navy. In wrestling, more qualifications for the Tokyo Olympic Games are expected at the African Championships built for El Jadida, Morocco, in April. National coach Purity Aku says Team Nigeria wrestlers are in good shape after their display at the just-ended Baraza Champion of Champions tournament in Yenagua, Bayasa State. <laughs> Very satisfied uh, with the performance of our athletes. It shows we still have some uh, serious uh, wrestlers. World number one in the 57 kg class, Odwayo Adekoroye, is the only wrestler that has qualified for the Olympics. And that's it on Sports Updates. I am Tamara Ebiwe. And Sports Update runs off the news on NTA International. Many thanks for watching, but remember to connect with the NTA and stand against rape and rapists. I'm Ayo DG Makindi.